Paint.net offers three different selection tools, a rectangle, a lasso, and an ellipse selection tool. So that's what we're going to cover in this short tutorial. Your three selection tools are going to be the top left three selection tools up here. You have your rectangle, your lasso, and then your ellipse tool. So the first one that I'm going to do is I'm going to use the ellipse tool and I'm going to try to select this quarter down here at the bottom. Now all you're going to do is hold down your left mouse key and drag and you can try to get it as closely as you can. If you want to keep your circle uniform, if you'll hold down the shift key on your keyboard, regardless however you drag, it's going to keep it as a uniform circle. So whichever way works best for you. I'm going to try to get this as close as I can. It doesn't matter if it's off because I can move it right now. You also have two different move tools. You have a move selected pixels, which is your blue arrow. Now if you use that, it's going to move the pixels that you have selected, and that's not what I want. The white arrow is going to let you move the selection. So I'm going to choose that, and I need to make this a little bit different in size. And you can just kind of keep playing with it till you get it exactly how you want it. So now that I have my quarter selected, what I want to do is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to duplicate this quarter. So to do that, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to Edit, Copy. Or you could also use your Copy button up here as well. And now I'm going to paste it. Now you learned about layers earlier, so I want to paste this into a new layer so that way I don't mess it up. Now I do want to move my selected pixels because I want to use that, just move that one quarter and that's going to move that area as well. The rectangle selection tool works just the same. Um, anytime you have, do you see how this blue selected again? Anytime you want to get rid of that selection, if you'll hold down control and hit D on your keyboard, it will get rid of that. Your rectangle selection works just the same. You can hold down shift and it will keep it as a square. Um, your lasso is going to let you go and select things that aren't a uniform shape. So if I wanted to come down here and get a big group like that together, that's what your lasso tool does. We're going to use the lasso tool to copy this hot air balloon. So the easiest way to do this is to zoom in. I'm going to move my hot air balloon over. I'm going to get my lasso tool. Now the nice thing about this is the sky around this hot air balloon the color is really similar so I don't have to be exact in selecting around the balloon I just need to get it pretty close you'll find that the more that you use these selection tools the better that you get at them now that I have that selected I'm going to come up here and copy it and I'm going to paste it into a new layer I'm going to move my selected pixels and now there's my second balloon. The magic wand is probably my favorite tool to use because it will select a lot of area at once. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this mom tattoo and we are going to put it on this guy's arm. Now you'll notice any time that I open up more than one image, my images are going to show up here at the top. So the first thing that I need to do is go to the mom tattoo and I'm going to come over here to my tools toolbar and I'm going to select the magic wand tool. Now the nice thing about this is like I said it will select everything that has a similar color and you'll notice you can change your tolerance up and down at the top. So right now 50 is pretty good for this so I'm going to select all of the white area. Now normally that's fine, I've selected all the white area, but what I want to do is select everything except for the white area. So now that I've selected the white area, I'm going to come up here to my edit and I'm going to invert the selection so that way it'll flip it and select everything except for the white. So now that I have my mom tattoo selected, I'm going to come up here and copy it to put it to my clipboard. Now I'm going to come to this arm tattoo and I'm going to come and paste it into a new layer. So here's my mom tattoo. I'm going to move it down here and I'm going to kind of resize it. He really loves his mom so he wants his tattoo big and proud there on his arm. 
Now, if you want to do a little bit more editing techniques right now, it looks kind of like um, a stick-on tattoo. You can change the opacity of it. So I can double click on this layer up here at the top and I can change the opacity of that to where it looks a little bit more realistic and not like one of those stick-ons that you would get out of a vending machine. We're going to use the magic wand tool again to select the sky background for this lighthouse picture and replace it with something else. And this is a really good tutorial to help explain the tolerance. So I have my lighthouse picture open and I have my magic wand tool selected. So I'm going to come over here and click on the skyline and you'll see that it kind of cuts into parts of this lighthouse because the colors are pretty similar. So that's where this tolerance comes into play. I'm going to decrease the tolerance just a little bit. Let's try 36. And now when I click on it, it's going to select everything down to the edges. So now I can come up to edit and cut. I'm going to cut that out. And I'm going to come and pick another background to do. Let's do a rainbow background. So my rainbow background is here. I'm going to first select it come up here to go to copy. I'm going to go back to my lighthouse picture and I'm going to paste it into a new layer. Now I need to make this a little bit larger. You'll notice it's on top of my lighthouse now so I'm going to use my layers palette and I'm going to move that layer down one so it's behind my lighthouse. Your crop tool is a little bit different than normal crop tools. The tool in paint.net is going to crop anything to your selection. So you first need to use like your rectangle select or ellipse or however you want it to be. And you're going to move your selection exactly how you want it to be cropped. Which is kind of handy because it will give you a little bit of a preview. Then once you have the image selected how you want, you'll come up here to the top and you'll click on Crop to Selection. Your eraser, pen, and text tools are very simplistic to use. Your text tool looks like the little T button down here at the bottom. And anytime you select it, it's going to give you the option to change your font type, your size, and any of the normal formatting that you would typically see with Microsoft Word or another word processing software. So you'll just click wherever you want. You can select your text. You can change your text, you can change your size, you can do lots of different things with that. Um, your paintbrush tool, very simplistic to use. The nice thing about this is you can choose whatever color you want your brush to be, and then you can come down here and draw. You'll also see up here at the top your brushed width. You can choose and pick to see how wide you want your brush to be. Your eraser tool, very simplistic. You just choose your eraser, you can choose how big you want your width to be, and then you can come in and erase whatever you've done how up to the point where you want it erased on. The eyedropper tool is another one of my favorites, and it's going to let you pick out a selective color from a picture. So if I know from this hot air balloon, I want to select out that purple to use as text. I can come over here to my tools menu and choose my eyedropper. I can come right on this purple and click, and you'll see it's going to show me my color down there at the bottom. So from there, I can either come and type words, I can use it as a brush, I can do however I want it to do. Your clone tool is another fun tool and what it does is it will clone one thing and put it somewhere else on your image. 
Your clone tool looks like the little rubber stamp over here. And when it's selected, you'll notice your brush width will change up here. You can choose to make it larger or smaller. I'm going to make it about a 14. That seems about just wide enough. And this can get really specific. I want my brush to be only as wide as the smallest part. So if I'm going to clone this pepper, I want my clone tool to be only as wide as the smallest part, which is going to be this stem. So I might even kind of lower it down just a little bit to maybe a 12. So your first step to do is to set your anchor point, and that's the beginning point to where you want your clone to start. To do that, you're going to hold down your control key on your keyboard. You'll notice now that I'm holding down control, I have that little anchor to the top right of that circle that's staying constant. So I'm holding down control, and I'm going to click one time, and that's going to set my anchor point. Now my anchor point is there, and it's flashing, so it tells me where it is. And I'm probably going to zoom in just a little bit. And you'll notice whenever you click and you move, I'm just kind of clicking along. My anchor point there over there to the left is going to show me where I'm at. Now this can get really precise. Some people like to drag with their mouse. I like to click, so if I need to undo, it doesn't undo a huge spot. People, when they drag, they might drag over there and it does a huge gash so to come over here and undo it if they would have drugged this whole way it would have undone the whole pepper so you're gonna go through here and I like to get the edge of what I'm cloning it's really your personal preference you'll find whenever you go through here and you practice you're gonna have your own preference to how you want to do it You can use your clone tool for a lot of different things. I could have used it at the very beginning whenever I used the selection tool to duplicate that quarter. I could have used a clone tool instead. So you'll see here, now I'm going to fill in the middle and I can even increase my brush size just to get that middle done. Now the one thing that I didn't do, and I probably should have, but this is just for the tutorial, I did this clone on the same layer, meaning if I wanted to go back in and clean up around my pepper and use my erase tool, it's not going to be handy for me here because I've put it on the same layer. So what I probably should have done before I cloned it was added this new layer and cloned the pepper on this new layer. So that way I could have used my eraser tool at the end and gone about and erased the edges of it to get it more precise. Once you start working more with your photo editing program, you're going to find ways to use the same tool in a lot of different methods. For example, your clone tool, not only can you use it to clone things, but you can also use it to get rid of things. And the example that I'm going to use here is I'm going to use the clone tool to get rid of this second floor title. And I'm going to take my clone tool, I'm going to set my anchor point right above it here on this wall, and I'm going to clone that wall right on top of it. And you might need to set your anchor points a couple of times just so the fading and everything doesn't look fake. I'm going to decrease my brush size a little bit. So you'll see how you can use the clone not only to duplicate but also to get rid of. The last trick I'm going to show is probably the most sought after trick. It's the one that I get asked to teach most often when I'm teaching a photo editing program. And that's how to take a black and white photo and make something, some element of it in color. So the way to do that is we're going to do this with this sweet little tutu girl who looks awfully happy right now. The first step to do this is to duplicate this layer. So I'm going to come down here to my layers palette and click on duplicate layer. I have two layers of the exact same thing. I'm going to make sure that I'm on my top layer and I'm going to come up to my adjustments and change it to be black and white. So now I have a black and white layer and if I hide that I have a color layer underneath it. So I'm going to use my eraser tool on this black and white layer and you can change your brush size to however you need it to be. 
I'm going to make it a little bit bigger just for this. Now keep in mind I'm not going to be exact. This is just for showing purposes. And I'm going to erase the black and white tutu so that way the color tutu underneath shows through. Now keep in mind when you're doing this for actual purposes and it's not just for training, you're going to want to change the brush size often and you're really going to want to zoom in so that way you can kind of get along the edges and it's more precise and it looks more professional and not really rushed and um, awfully done. So that's how you can take an image, make it black and white, and pull out a color element from within it.